So they will, they will be there many minutes with the mayors. They are on the 13th floor right now. Do you need anything? What do you think? So it's going to be fine. We have a little photos. It's here. We have, we have very good messages here. Mm -hmm. And how was the round table, by the way? I think it was very good. Uh, Tony, I don't yes. know what you're in this. I thought it was very good. I mean, uh, it was, in a way, it was more consensual than I expected. I mean, they shared a lot of the same uh, points. I mean, they talked about problems, but it wasn't, uh, I mean, they were very positive problems.
Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Uh, welcome to this press conference on uh, the integration of migrants in cities, uh, which follows on from uh, a round table that took place this morning, uh, just a few floors up from here, um, organized uh, the initiative of uh, Commissioner Kretsu sitting next to me in cooperation with uh, Commissioner Avramopoulos, who's joining us just fresh back from uh, Turkey. Um, we have interpretation available for this press conference in English, French, and and Spanish. The press conference is being web streamed as well, so welcome to everybody watching us via web streaming. Uh, we'll begin straight away with a short statement uh, from Commissioner Kretsu and from Commissioner Avramopoulos, uh, and then we'll open the floor to questions addressed to the two commissioners or to the uh, mayors and vice mayors present here who participated in the round table this morning. Commissioner Kretsu. Thank you very much. Uh, good afternoon. I was very pleased to welcome here in Brussels, together with uh, Commissioner Avramopoulos, the mayors and vice mayors of uh, Amsterdam, uh, Athens, Barcelona, Berlin, Ghent, Leipzig, and Paris, for this roundtable round on how to strengthen uh, the integration of migrants uh, in cities. And I would like to thank also the relevant ONGs, uh, NGOs, uh, um, civil society, uh, Red Cross, UN, Eurocities, and also, of course, our services, uh, DG Home, DG Employment, uh, DG Regio, of course. Uh, we wanted to meet uh, personally the mayors uh, uh, in this um, um, very tough uh, uh, times, and I think it was very important to meet today. And especially now, after the barbaric attacks of the 22nd of March, I think this is another signal, another symbol that, uh, about European unity and solidarity. Uh, as you know, uh, migration is the biggest uh, challenge we have uh, ever had to face as a union. And uh, for months now, we have been working on a coordinated European response to address the emergency of the refugees. And uh, of course, in the first place, focus on short-term uh, action is uh, very important. But we all know that the most effective solution is to work uh, on the long term. And uh, our duty is to cont contribute and uh, make uh, um, in such a way to turn the migration challenge into an opportunity for all uh, by successfully integrating migrants in our societies. This is why we have decided to engage in direct dialogue with the cities. And today, uh, in fact, we are launching a new partnership between European Commission and European cities on the integration of migrants, because it's very well known that migration is largely an urban reality, and everyday cities are conf confronted with these concrete challenges involving migration, whether it is housing, uh, education, employment, cities are at the forefront of the EU response to these challenges. And of course, we are very much aware that uh, it's not easy for cities to be faced with such a sudden and unexpected influx of migrants. I am fully aware that migration has become one of the biggest concerns for many countries and cities. And uh, we have now more than one million refugees uh, in the European territory, in European cities, 40% women and children, 10,000 uh, unaccompanied uh, children, and uh, for us, uh, these are a uh, priority. We can help these people, uh, these children, to find their place in the society and give them a future in Europe. Uh, cohesion policy plays a crucial role here, as we already co-founded thousands of social inclusion uh, uh, projects. Cohesion policy funds are ready to support urban areas in promoting integration by financing projects in social education, infrastructure, housing, childcare, health, but also <laughs> business startups, languages courses, or professional training. To, we have already thousands of these uh, projects of the ground. For example, to, just to give an, uh, you an example, in Brals, Brussels we have uh, just started to support a co-working space in Molenbeek, which is helping to create jobs, but also promote, promoting uh, social diversity. We are also uh, in uh, the ongoing discussion with Brussels authorities uh, in order to see how we can 
make a better contribution to social integration through our policy. I also visited uh, such projects in Berlin, in Athens, or in Paris, and uh, I was glad to see that our policy uh, really contributed to improve the lives of the people who came uh, here looking for a better future. Just uh, for you to know that uh, over 2014, 2020, uh, 15 billion from uh, Euro ERDF, European Regional Development Fund, will be dedicated to urban areas and will be directly managed by urban authorities. So uh, we are ready to be flexible, to modify cohesion policy programs to respond uh, to new needs linked to the migration challenges, and uh, I reiterate this commitment today. I would like to underline that the forthcoming EU urban agenda, which will be hosted by the mayor of Amsterdam, will constitute a great opportunity for cities to better work together with a stronger involvement at, uh, of all stakeholders in uh, urban areas. Area. So thank you uh, once again. I think it is a very important moment. Tackling the refugee crisis is a matter of humanity, of course, and human dignity. And uh, we are at the beginning of a long journey, and integration will increasingly become key in managing man, uh, migration. And uh, we would like to make sure that the European Commission fully supports cities and local authorities in their efforts to integrate migrants in line with our core European values. Thank you once again, and thank you to Dimitris also for being here today with us. Thank you, Corinne. Um, first of all, allow me to say that I'm deeply sorry that I couldn't be part of this meeting that took place before today, although I had uh, a promise to my good friend and colleague, uh, Corinna Kretsch, that I would be with you, uh, because I had to come all the way back from Turkey. Um, the airport of Brussels is closed. I had to fly to Lille, and there we found out that the trucks had blocked the auto route, so we had to go all around the Gantt beer. But we came. And we came, first of all, because I was committed to come for two reasons. First of all, to be next to my good colleague, Corina Kretsu. Uh, and all, the second is to be among mayors, because maybe you don't know, but I have been mayor myself for two terms in the city of Athens. I never forget it. And I'm very close to mayors whenever they try to tackle all these difficult issues, because I know, since I have lived it, what does it mean? Just to tell you that the very first wave of uh, uh, irregular migrants mixed with the refugees, but in a totally different way, took place in the beginning of the 90s, when hundreds of thousands of citizens from the former Eastern European countries were coming over to Europe. And in Greece, we were confronted with a difficult situation. It was the Albanians that were coming there. And who was the first one to suffer and try to find a solution? The mayors. The mayors had no idea. The countries were caught by surprise. The mayors did not have the means, the tools, the competence, and the money. So we have to cope with this reality. And today, given this new uh, situation, let me tell you that uh, I'm among the ones who really know and feel what the cities are trying to do under very, very difficult circumstances. So the initiative undertaken by my colleague to convene this meeting is more than important because you, the mayors, you are the front of our common and joint effort to address this issue. So we have to be supportive you, to, to you, to understand you, and of course to listen to you. This has to do also not only with the Commission but also with the national governments. Well, our priority right now, as uh, Corinna said before, is to address the challenges of the refugee crisis. Uh, as I told you, I have just come back from Turkey. Uh, I'm sure you have been following very closely uh, what uh, has happened there during the last days. But this should not uh, let us um, neglect or forget the importance of integration uh, which is the, the substance of this meeting here today, of legal migrants, of refugees. Uh, successful integration is um, an essential, essential element of a successful migration policy. Integration takes place at the local level. This is why 
I'm grateful to Eurocities and, uh, of course, to my good uh, uh, colleague, Corinna Kretschow, for having taken this initiative. Cities, as I, as I said in the beginning, are at the front line of this uh, process. Mayors, local governments in general, municipalities have an important, substantial, crucial, and major role in the integration process as they manage the challenge of welcoming migrants in their respective communities uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. And I can tell you uh, from the experience of that, of that time, this process is far from easy. Uh, I mentioned before my experience in the mid-90s. Uh, there are many similarities with what is happening uh, today. Uh, with uh, the latest uh, refugee crisis and the sheer volume of people that arrived since last year, this challenge has become even more difficult, even more complex. Frankly speaking, the crisis has pushed many cities to their limits. When refugees arrive to Europe, the local authorities are usually the first to provide for their basic needs. First aid, medical uh, uh, services, food, clothing, shelter, etc. They are also responsible for setting up and hosting reception centers. And now, with uh, the recent relocation scheme, they are also the ones who are welcoming the relocated refugees and having to integrate them in their local uh, uh, social fiber. So we should recognize and uh, congratulate cities for their valuable work in dealing with the refugee crisis. In the Commission, we are very conscious of what is happening at this level. And as Corina said before, we are ready to provide you with the necessary help, understanding and support. This work is the ultimate expression of Europe's universal values. Solidarity, humanity, responsibility, dignity, and respect of human rights. The challenge of integration should, however, not make us forget the advantages of multicultural cities. Many of them are represented by their mayors around this table. A more culturally aware society and ethnically diverse work workforce can help in order to foster a culture of to tolerance and acceptance of differences. Dear friends, today's event, as uh, I was told by Corinna, has been very, very useful. It offered insight of how the European Commission can better contribute, can better assist the efforts of cities. It also underscored the importance of strengthening the dialogue and cooperation between the local and the European authorities. The exchange of experiences and best practices implemented in many cities is a great example of this cooperation, which uh, can help identify effective, efficient, and financially sound solutions to the current challenges. The Commission is committed to further assisting both member states and local governments and cities with additional financial means, targeted guidance, and policy advice. For the period 2014-2020, the Commission has made available around 760 million euros for integration purposes for member states under the Asylum, Migration and Integration Fund. We have also urged and encouraged member states to look into how the existing allocations under the European Structural and Investment Funds could be used for a wide range of measures regarding social inclusion, education, and labor market integration, including access to services and infrastructure. But you will agree with me 
that it is not on integration. It offers concrete support to member states on integrating not just those who have recently arrived, the newcomers, but also those who may have been in Europe for several years. Let me here make a remark. It is to be questioned why all these young people who were born in our countries and they consider somehow our country's homeland, why one day they turn their guns against their own home? Is the question to be answered? Because finally, all the ones who perpetrated the same route, but the question is here, why? So the answer is very simple. The integration policy has to be reconsidered and advised. And when we talk about integration, we come to the topic of this meeting here today. And we are very sensitive on that in the European Commission, as I'm sure this morning Corina had the uh, uh, time and uh, the pleasure to express to you. One thing is clear. level of the process. We must stick and work together. We must coordinate our efforts. And of course, Europe's cities must be at the heart of this process. So it is in this spirit I Commissioner Avramopoulos has to leave us uh, very, very soon because you have another press conference on the outcome of yeah, your mission to Turkey. Squeeze today. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have time for one or two questions before yeah. you leave us? So, if there are any specific leave. Thank you. I'm Francis Serra from the Qatar. Uh, the mayor of Barcelona and also the Catalan government have uh, repeatedly asked the Spanish government to participate in the relocation scheme they offer to, to welcome more than 4,000 refugees uh, to Barcelona, to Catalonia. I would like to know what should the Spanish government, and I'm sure that other uh, towns, other regions in Europe uh, will do the same, what should the, the Spanish government do about this, this offer from the mayor from Barcelona, who is here, and also the Catalan government. Thank you. Microphone, microphone. Gab, let me start by telling you that we have an excellent cooperation with uh, the Spanish uh, government. As you know, the authorities of Europe, the institutions of Europe, have a, a direct line of cooperation with the governments of all member states. Now, on the second part of your question, I understand that there is also a very good cooperation between the government and the local authorities, not only Spain, but all around Europe. Now, when we say good cooperation, what do we mean? Not only in atmospherics, but also in practical terms. Because, as I said before, local governments, cities, need the support of the European Union. But this help and this support goes through always national governments. The direct interlocutor of, institutionally speaking, of, of Europe are the governments of the member states. So, we have allocated money. We give all necessary support. We are here to discuss about all these issues. Because today, it was not, ju it was not just one more meeting. Corina took note of what you said. And this will be discussed at the level of the Commission. Some of these issues might be discussed also at the level of the European uh, Parliament, and then at the level of Council. But as you know, as you know at the Council level, at the
Mr. Mayor, I can tell you that during my times I had a lot of hardship to convince central governments. But this emulation should lead to a dialogue, to relations of good faith, in order to have concrete results. Thank you, Commissioner. I'm, I'm being uh, signalled that I, I believe you have to leave us now, so uh, thanks so much for, for being here. But I like it here. <laughs> <laughs> so. Well, sorry, I have to go back because now I have another issue. That, another issue that you are also confronted with. Right. Microphone. To take the results of the next uh, uh, meeting will be very useful because I understand this is one of the issues that local governments are confronted uh, with at this level. Thank you very much, and I wish you a great success to your endeavors. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, so if I may, oh. I, I to say uh, one word on uh, on Spanish. I was. I am very pleased that the. Uh, We very much appreciate uh, their openness. I must say that uh, from our point of view, I did not receive any response uh, on my uh, letter I addressed to the Spanish government asking uh, if they want to use uh, our funds for the purpose of, uh, of migrants. So we don't know yet. And uh, for 2014-2020, uh, Spain, uh, Spain has uh, allocated from European funds 290 million euro for sustainable urban uh, development, and this money will be dedicated for uh, fighting poverty. And uh, uh, as well, is one of the countries that where we don't know how this money will be allocated among cities. But it's not the only country that still is thinking how to allocate the money. Uh, so I see several hands up there. Perhaps we could take a block of questions from this side of the room, uh, if you'd like to take it in turn. Uh, sorry, my question will be uh, in French, uh, Miss Kretzel. Uh, um, des fonds européens et la possibilité de aux États membres pour faire face aux flux migratoires. C'est qu'il y, y a pas mal D'autre part, vous avez cité les chiffres disponibles pour, pour la, euh, les questions migratoires. Dégager pour faire, pour faire face à la crise migratoire. Euh, municipalités et les villes qui souhaitent accueillir les, les, les migrants. What, what will it uh, expect it to come out? Vice Mayor. Is that are the attitudes of the citizens? Thank you. Athanasius with Startana Land, the real news, Greece. Uh, I understand that you will find money for the uh, anti radicalization uh, campaign or strategy, but I do not really get what is the 
and the radicalization strategy that you're going to implement in the Uh, I'll, I'll uh, invite uh, Commissioner Kretsu to respond, and then perhaps if any of the mayors or vice mayors yes. wants to come in afterwards uh, in response to the question from our colleague from EU Observer. So, uh, first of all, about the reprogramming uh, funds. So, we said that we are very